Okay, so uh, we're going to try to finish off this section now. Um, we know that forces always come in interaction pairs. Okay, so if you're standing on the floor, your your foot is applying a force to the floor, and your the floor is applying a force to your foot. Okay, you press against a wall, hand against wall equals wall against hand, etc. Okay, interaction pairs. Okay, and we've seen this before, but what we what we want to basically take out of this is that the force of the of object one on object two is the negative of the force of object two on ob, uh, of object two on object one. Okay, so this is based on Newton's third law. It says whenever two objects interact, okay, two carts collide, a car collides with a tree, uh, a mosquito with a truck. Anything. When two objects interact, they exert on each other forces that are equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. Okay. And that is Newton's th third law. <laughs> law. <laughs> Newton's third law. Okay. So they forces F1, 2 and F2, 1 form an interaction pair. Now, I want to do this little problem here because I think this is great. Listen to this. See if you can solve this one. If forces always come in interaction pairs, and the forces in such a pair are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction, okay? How can the vector sum of the forces exerted on an object ever be non-zero? So, if two objects are interacting with each other, they're, they're interaction pairs. We know that the force of the one on the other is equal and opposite to the force of the other one on that one. Okay, I hope you're not too confused. F12 is the negative of F21. Now the question is, if that's the case, how can the vector sum of the forces exerted on an object ever be non-zero? Okay, let me see if I can get my pen. So if you've got object 1 there, and they're interacting, that's 1 and 2. Then we know that F12 is acting in that direction, and F21 is acting in that direction, and they are equal and opposite. So F12 is the negative of F21. If this is the case, then how can forces acting on an object ever be non-zero? Okay, because surely they just cancel each other out. So now this is this is a very good question. Um, this is only applicable when you are considering two objects interacting. The other situation is when you're just considering a single object with forces acting acting on this object. So now remember, guys. Um, if you consider this as your system, right, then the sum of the forces in the system it will equal zero, right? So now you're looking at two different forces on two different bodies. But say now you just isolated one. What are you going to see? If you just isolated one as your system, then all you're going to see is F21 acting on this one. And then this one can accelerate. The sum of the forces can be non-zero. Okay? Similarly, if you just isolated 2, then what, what is the sum of the forces on 2? It's F12. Then, then if, if you're just looking at 2 then this is the only force acting on 2. And then again, you've got non-zero force. And so this will accelerate. This will accelerate. But if you consider them as a pair, then the forces cancel out. Okay? I hope that makes sense.